good amount of time left, maybe 20 minutes. So I wanna move now into the next part of the course. We've, we've talked uh, quite a bit about this method of characteristics, how to apply it. Um, we've talked about linear transport. So we really covered uh, a pretty broad gamut of, of first order um, methods for PDE. But really the focus of this course is gonna be on um, second order PDE. And the first one that we're gonna deal with is the wave equation, okay? So just to warm us up on this, okay? Let's suppose that u sub t t minus c squared u sub x x is equal to zero, okay? This is what's called our wave equation. And let's say that um, we're even looking over the whole uh, R2 plane and that C, this, this is a constant that's greater than zero, okay? And we'll assume that U is uh, C2, okay? So it's nice and classical. What I want to show you is that the principles of the linear transport equation extend here. So if you remember back to when we were talking about linear transport equation, we had characteristics here, okay? We still have this notion of characteristics, but we have two, okay? So we have characteristics that sort of flow this way in the xy plane, and we have characteristics that flow this way in the xy plane. The, we're talking about the wave equation. So I want you to think of, you know, like dropping a, a pebble into the water, right? What happens? You get these radiating annular sort of waves emanating from the point at which you drop the pebble in the water, okay? This is the idea with the wave equation, that you have, you have propagation in all directions from a source, you know? Uh, the sound of an explosion, well, it's gonna, you know, propagate, the sound waves are gonna, are gonna move through the air, and they're gonna propagate outward from the source, right? They're not, they're not gonna have a, a, a preferred direction as you do in the, in the linear transport equation, okay? So let's just show sort of using these characteristics how we might take this PDE. Now I don't have any initial or boundary conditions yet. Let's, let's forget about those for now. Let's basically show that um, the formula U of psi eta, which is equal to u of x of these things, t of these things, okay? This satisfies a much simpler partial differential equation, which is just that u sub psi sub uh, eta is equal to zero, okay? So this is the second order this is really, this is second order, but we're just sort of taking this cross derivative of the same capital U, okay? So the idea then is that I'm gonna write down okay, the partial with respect to T in my original variable. And note that if I, if I wanna know how that enters into a partial with respect to eta, it's gonna be D, sorry, D, psi dt plus its total derivative in t is also going to involve d eta dt times d eta, okay? What are these things? Well, I just look up here. I take the derivative of that with respect to t. I just get a c. I get c d psi, and I get a minus c d psi here. Oh, sorry, d eta. Okay. 
What about BTT? Well, I do the same thing again, right? I just apply this operator twice. If I apply this operator twice, then I get C okay, times D psi minus D eta squared, okay? Or in other words, C squared D psi psi minus two D psi eta plus D eta eta, okay? I just apply my differentiation two times, right? And you just sort of, you know, foil it out, okay? So, um, fine, but what about my partials with respect to x, right? So now I've handled this part. If I wanna see how I differentiate with respect to x in these new coordinates, I do the same thing. I say, well, dx is gonna be equal to dx i dx times dx i plus d eta dx d eta, okay? This is equal to what? Well, this is one and this is one. So I just get dx i plus d eta, okay? And then dx x is equal to well, just the square of this operation, okay? So I get d xi xi plus two d xi eta plus d eta eta, okay? Great, so now I'm ready to put all this together. I'm gonna say, well, now if I apply d x x, that's really just like applying this, right? If I apply d t t, it's just like um, applying this operation here. Okay, so I plug it all in and see what comes out. So what I have is that zero is equal to d t t minus c squared d x x of u. That I know for sure. This now is equal to c squared times d xi xi minus two d psi eta plus d eta eta minus d psi psi minus two d psi eta minus two eta eta, okay? Times, well, what did I say? I said that I want u to be equal to this capital U, but now I'm putting it in these coordinates. So I can swap out my lowercase u for capital U. Okay, so now this is equal to, well, this cancels with this, this cancels with this, and I'm just left with minus four C squared U psi eta, okay? But I can divide through by minus four C squared because C is positive, so I get U psi eta is equal to zero, okay? Cool, what did this all tell me? It tells me that this, mapping to these characteristics is helpful. So I should expect to see those characteristics when I work through solutions to the weight.